that will not let you rest. Tonight they shall be laid to rest. The God who can take a lady from the jungle of kidnap and translocate her to the junction of safety military checkpoint by the express God day this is the second of this kind of testimonies we've had this one week young lady from Makodi coming to I think to Abuja or so vehicle some assaulted three times one, two, bam, bam bam by the time the vehicle had ended, somersault, sister, little girl, found herself outside the vehicle, sitting by the road. With her headphone in her ear, listening. You are holy, Lord, you are holy. Another of the songs. You are highly lifted up. And the song continued. She was seated with the earpiece. Three people had died. Other people had disastrous from the same vehicle. They took all of them to the hospital. Doctor said, are you sure you are in that vehicle? He said, I am. He said, it's not true. Assess her. Do ultrasound. Do EMRI. Just keep her on observation for one week. Maybe there is some internal injury we haven't seen. Just keep her. At the end of one week, the doctor said, which church do you go? Hey! That was another translocation. Spiritual transportation. God brought her from the car. Hear me tonight. Every time you are found in the midst of danger, your God and my God will bring you out. That same God is here tonight. He will prove himself in your life, in your family, in our nation. Give the Lord a praise and take your seat. You are the Savior of my soul. Psalm 107. Jesus, you are my Jesus. You are the Savior of my soul. Oh, you are the Savior of my soul. Psalm 107, verse 15 to 16. All that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men for he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder breaking chains and destroying yokes by virtue of introduction, now we are here basically to understand the chain breaking and yoke destroying power of God. We serve a God who is a chain breaker and yoke destroyer. Chains break and yokes and bondages don't survive where he appears. 
the way you see rubber, polythene, melt in the midst of fire. That is how chains dissolve, disintegrate, dematerialize. In the presence of Elion, Elohim, Elohino, Elohika, El Gibor, Olamore, Adon Adonai, the father of all lights, the one who was not created, who was not elected, who was not appointed, who was not nominated, who was not selected, and his position cannot be contested. The ageless, dieless, weariless, tireless, limitless, faintless, faithful God shall power. I am talking about the God that dries up seas and rivers by his presence. Psalm 114 verse 1 to the end. It dries up seas and rivers with his presence. Also, I am talking about the God who dissolves mountains by his presence. Psalm 164, Isaiah chapter 64, verse 1 to 2. He said, Oh, that thou would rend the heavens, that you will come down that the mountains might flow down at thy presence as when the melting fire burned. So we are dealing with the God who is who melts, who dries up rivers, melts mountains and thirdly breaks brazen gates and Cuts iron bars. We have iron benders. He is not iron bender. He is iron melter. He breaks brazen gates and, and destroys, dissolves, cuts iron bars. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse 2 to 3, he told that Cyrus, he said, I will go before you. I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. I will cut in sunder the bars of iron. Woo! That is the God we are dealing with. And I will be prophesying and prophet preaching as we go ahead. Everyone standing in front of any Red Sea. By tonight's anointing, that Red Sea is divided. Every river standing before you. By tonight's anointing, that river is divided. Every mountain standing in your life. A financial career, destiny, marital mountain. By the anointing with which I preach tonight, that mountain is melted. Every brazen, every, every gate of brass, every iron holding anything belonging to you by the anointing with which I decree, they are broken. Take your seat now, prince of the Lord. He broke the chains and destroyed the yoke for Joseph. It's a 105 verse 17 to 20. He sent a man before them. Even Joseph who was sold for his, his servant. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in iron. He had chains. Until the time that the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord tried him. And the king sent and loosed him. Even the ruler of the people and let him go free. If Joseph can go free, you will go free. <laughs> he broke the chain for, for Joseph. He broke the chain for the Israelites. He brought them out of captivity. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 13. 
He told the children of Israel, I am the Lord your God which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt that you should not be the abundant. I have broken the bands of your yoke and I made you to go upright. He's saying whatever made you to face down, I broke it so you can face up. And stand upright. Tonight, that ancestral devil, that generational curse, that thing that say nobody should rise out of your lineage, tonight it shall be broken. That thing that is killing people before their time in your family line, tonight the yoke shall be broken. spirit of near success syndrome you almost succeeded then it failed you almost gave a testimony then it failed tonight that devil shall be broken any man or woman who has considered themselves as a witch or a wizard or an occultic personality a strong man or a strong woman who will not let you rest? If they don't repent after tonight, they shall be laid to rest. The title of tonight is not for nothing. It's already happening. Breaking chains. Destroying yokes. Out of your father's house, you will be the one God will use to deliver the rest. You cannot serve God in shame. You cannot serve God in reproach. You cannot serve God in mockery. The Bible is real. The word of God is real. God is real. And he shall be real in your life. Those waiting to bury you, you will bury them. Those waiting to bury your brothers, your sisters, your loved ones, I announce today, you will bury them. Somebody shout power. Even within the next seven days, you shall testify. Take your seat. They say you should not marry on time. That devil is a bastard liar. Mahashadaya. Everything they used to cover you is set on fire. They say you should not bring forth your own children. That devil is a liar. Wherever they kept your children, they are released now. Somebody blast in tongues for 60 seconds. If you don't know what to do, just scream hallelujah. Scream Mahashidi. Lekebo Hosidi. Laha Kasabaradish. Lekete Kafata Lata Farata Kakasakala.
gallery everywhere. Let a sick bega da galayash. Let a sefretini mina galayalash. Let fairies kini mina ala sheni mama na galayala hashalala. In Jesus name. So shall it be. Take your seat. That's right. I am anointed to announce those who have been saying, where is your God? In this season, starting from today, they shall encounter your God. you've been going to church what have you got to show from this night they will see what you will show I've been serving God for years and I have what to show everything to show and the Bible said I and the children the Lord has given to me we are for signs and for wonders if we have what to show you have what to show you have what to show. Somebody shout power. <laughs> While the word is on, the yokes are breaking. The yokes are breaking. Take your seat. He broke the chain for Joseph. Broke the chain of the children of Israel. He broke the chain for Peter. Acts chapter 6 verse 6 chapter 12 verse 6 Peter was not put in prison because he killed somebody. He said, and when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. He was bound. Verse 8, and suddenly, the angel said unto him, guard yourself, bind your sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, cast your garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He didn't know it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. And they were past the first and second one, they came into the iron gate that leaded into the city. It opened to them of his own accord. Hi -ya 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 -ya. Every gate that has locked you out of your destiny, Every gate that locked you out of your destiny, even if it is an iron gate, tonight the gate is opening. <laughs> Peter's assignment was in the city, and the iron gate locked him out of the same city. <laughs> it locked him out of the same city. But when the angel came, it opened of its own accord. That door you have been trying to open that could not open to you, tonight of its own accord, it shall open. Somebody shout power. Shout the loudest power. after me I shall fulfill my destiny my assignment in God I shall fulfill my destiny in God by force Take your seat. 
And then of course, Paul the Apostle and Silas. It's my fourth example of those for whom God broke the chain and destroyed the yoke. Paul was not in prison because he did the wrong thing. He only tried to deliver somebody. For many of us, there are challenges you have experienced and people want you to explain what you did wrong. Where did you go wrong? For somebody I'm here to let you know, it is not what you did wrong. It is not what is wrong with you that is paining the devil. It is what is right with you. What is right about your life? The kind of destiny you carry. The kind of assignment ahead of you. The number of people you are meant to deliver. The number of yokes you are meant to break. The devil say, if we let this man go free, too many people will be free. So let us tie down his life. Tie down his money. Tie down his finances. Tie down his resources. But that devil is a liar. Too late for the devil. Look at your neighbor. Say, it's not necessarily what is wrong with you. That is the problem. But most times, it is what is right with you. What is right about your life and your destiny that the devil is afraid of. But that devil came too late. He came too late because he couldn't kill you in your mother's womb. He came too late because he couldn't kill you when you were a child. He came too late because he couldn't kill you before you came to know Jesus Christ. Hey! He came too late because he couldn't kill you before you came under this dangerous, devil-destroying mantle. Without a doubt, something is breaking tonight. For somebody here from today, even your dream shall change. The kind of things you dream in the night from today, even your dreams shall change. Shout power. This is what the Lord is telling me. Very soon you won't need to talk too much about your God to people. They will follow you to know him because they will see him in your life. You won't need to talk too much about church to people. You won't need to struggle to win them. Your physical life, your experience is going to communicate a message that will make people follow you to know that God. Shout power. God speaking to somebody here. After this night, you are going to walk on cloud nine. Take your seat. I was preaching at Bishop John Francis Church in London last week. At Ruach. 
I said, take your seat. The bishop said, but you are not making us to sit down. <laughs> you, see, you see, I should sit down. How? <laughs> he said, it is only 15 minutes and I have had too much. Masha <laughs> Koko God is not the age mate of the devil. The angels are not in contest with demons. Hey! The altar of your father's house is not a match for Calvary. It's not a match for the altar at Calvary. That is why I'm convinced tonight that whatever has been holding you, tonight the grip is lost. And this is also going to be a very aggressive judgmental night. Anyone who claims he is strong enough to try God, after tonight they shall be laid to rest. You are not permitted to walk about like a victim. Going to church, hold my Bible like this. What will I do about this devil? Let him leave. From today, it is the devil that will beg you to leave him alone. Take your seat. <laughs> One sister, the mother was the, was the head of the witchcraft in a particular place. After some brutal declarations, the witches met the mother and said, now that your pastor has decided to kill our leader, what do you want us to do now? She died. And they knew the source of the fire. They knew where the grenade came from. Yeah. <laughs> hey! yeah. Everyone that is like that in your life and in your lineage, they have only seven days to change. spiritual prison warden every spiritual prison keeper that will not let you go out their head will go for you and you shall go free shout the loudest amen your seat in the presence of the Lord. You don't promise it, they never fail. I go follow on. I go follow on. He don't promise he they never fail. In own straightness he they so to go. He's straight, he doesn't bend. I give you seven keys to the breaking of chains and the destruction of yokes. Number one, the sent word. The sent word. There is a word that is located for every chain 
Psalm 107, verse 15. All that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. What did he use to break this gate of brass? And cut the bar of iron. Verse 20. He sent his word. And healed them. And brought them out. From the cage. He sent his word. And healed them. And delivered them from their imprisonment. It's a sent word. Psalm 105. Verse 17 to 20. He sent a man before them. Even Joseph who was sold for a servant. Whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. Until the time. That his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. And when that word came. The king sent and loosed him. When your word comes. Your chains break. The king sent. And loosed him. That word can come in the course of preaching like this. All of a sudden your eyes open. For example, I preached some time ago tight on, on a subject, no weapon formed shall prosper. Anybody was there? That was an illumination. Lights, eyes open. It doesn't matter how many people gathered? The question is, who gathered them? In gathering, they shall gather. But not by me. If it is by me, you can be worried. <laughs> but since I am not the one who gathered them, the gathering is inconsequential. It is remotely disconnectedly redundant assembly of irrelevant people that's, that's how one word can come and then you walk through the camp of witchcraft and you are passing as if they didn't exist you see I am the one who created the blacksmith that manufacture the, the dengon and the pellet bullet but I didn't create him to manufacture anything to finish you the word can come while the service is on the word can come while you study on your own I prophesy already many words have come tonight but I prophesy tonight any word you still need for a freedom in one area or the other tonight that word shall be released that passage shall be released in the course of this service in the course of your personal study it is released take your seat what are the keys to the breaking of chains? The sent word. That is why those who don't like to hear preachings, they like to continue in chains. The sent word. Number two, the heart of service. Israel is my firstborn. Let my son go that he may serve me. And if you won't let him go, I will kill your sons. That was Exodus chapter 4 verse 23. I say unto you, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if you, receive, if you refuse to let him go, I will kill your son, even your firstborn. He refused to let him go. And God killed their firstborn. And they still went. The firstborns died. 
and they were and they and they released them in a hurry. God spoke this thing seven times. Let my son go. That he may. And you know the number of God is the number seven. Exodus 4:23. Let my son go. Exodus 7:16. Let my son go. Exodus 8:1. Let my son go. Exodus 8:20. Let my son go. Exodus 9:1. Let my son go. Exodus 9:13. Let my son go. That he may serve me. Then Exodus chapter 10 verse 3. Let my son go. That he may serve me. 423, 7, 16, 8, 1, 8, 20, 9, 1, 9, 13, 10, 3. All of Exodus. They refused. God said, you cannot hold anybody who is willing to serve me. You can't hold them. The witches of your family can tie you down if you are willing to serve God and you are ready to serve God. The, the altars of your father's house, the, 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 the occultic manipulation of the one who wanted to marry you cannot hold you down. If you are ready to serve me, they must let you go. That is what God is saying. And when they didn't let them go on time, the, the people died. Then it's in Exodus 12, 31. <laughs> and he called for Moses after his firstborn has already died. And he ran back in the night, not in the day. Rise up, get you forth from among my people. Go, 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 go. Both you and the children of Israel, go, serve the Lord. As you have said, go, 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 you hear? Take your flock. Everything you want, take. be gone, be gone. But before you go, bless me also. Pharaoh too is looking for blessing. Chapter 3 verse 17. They shall be mine. And I will spare them. As one spared his son who serves him. Malachi 3 17. And I will, I, I will rescue them. I will rescue them. I will deliver them. Like somebody delivers one who serves him. All I want from you tonight is to make up your mind to dash yourself to God in service. And I prophesy to you. Everyone serving God with your life and your heart. And the devil and their agents will not let you rest. I prophesy tonight they shall be laid to rest. Can that amen be louder? Can that amen be louder? Look at somebody by side. I said, I am serving God. I shall serve God. And the forces of hell must let me go. Give the Lord a 60 second shout of hallelujah. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. Shout. A louder shout. Loud most shout. Amen. Is God speaking to anybody at all? Number four. Desperate praying. Desperate praying. When I say pray tonight, everything you have written on that list, you are going to deal with them aggressively as if you wouldn't have any other time to pray. Desperate praying. That was how Jacob prayed. Genesis 32 verse 24 to 28. He prayed that the Lord will 
change his story, break his chains, and God heard him. That was how Jabez prayed. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. Lord, I am in this sorrow. I don't want to live like this. He prayed. When you become desperate in prayer, your results become drastic in manifestation. When you become desperate in that girl said she fasted and prayed in January like she had never done before. And her father that had been in prison for 12 years on death row willing, ready to be killed was re 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 released. When you become desperate in praying your results become drastic in manifestation. Desperate pray. Number four, the act of sacrifice. When Noah offered sacrifice, God destroyed the curse from the earth. Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 to 22. God smelt a sweet savour. And God said, I will no longer curse the earth. When David sacrificed, Psalm 126, 1 to 6, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we are like them that dream. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Altars of sacrifice are turned around altars. The Lord turned the captivity of Zion. By sacrifice. The fire of sacrifice is the cure for the chains of the enemy. It melts the chains. Sacrifice. One day David counted the people and God became angry. You are counting the people means that from you want, you want to start counting on the people. To depend on the people and not me. I will destroy what you want to count depend on. So God began to kill the Israelites. In 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 24 to 25. And the king said unto Arana, Arana, nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. I will not offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God, of that which doth cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague ended because of sacrifice. Every time sacrifice is called in the church, don't look away. As a pastor of this church, it is not possible for me to call a sacrifice and I am not part of it. Impossible. It won't be called if I won't be part. Impossible. It, it, the times when we used to say, those who will give so and so rate from so and so level up, come out. If I cannot belong to the highest level, I won't call it. Am I communicating at all? There are times that sacrifices are called in church. There are times that God will lay it on you as an individual. Do so and so. It is for the turnaround of your captivity. We are in a season of sacrifice right now. I prophesy to somebody, every captivity and chain around your life is breaking in this season. Shout the loudest, amen. Number five, the action of fasting. Fasting. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6 and 8. He said, is not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness to undo heavy burdens to let the oppressed go free and you will break every chain, every yoke. See? Fasting breaks the yoke. Let the oppressed to go free. He breaks the yoke. Matthew 17, 21. Master, why are we not able to cast out this devil? This kind goeth not out. But by prayer and fasting. I've just mentioned prayer separately. And now this is the fast. One day, 
Haman wanted the people of Queen Esther killed. Esther declared the fast. If I perish, I perish. And that captivity turned around. Esther 4 verse 16. How many of you remember when the Ammonites, the Edomites, the Moabites, three of them gathered against Judah and Jehoshaphat. And in verse 3 of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Jehoshaphat proclaimed the fast. And all Judah. And the story changed. Somebody's story is changing tonight. If you are that person, you shout the louder, Amen. If you are that person, you shout the loudest, Amen. Lift your right and say, My story is changing tonight. My story is changing tonight. My story must change tonight. Say a louder amen. When the church declares a fast, queue up with it. Normally every Wednesday is meant to be a fasting day. And I think we shall emphasize it more often and more frequently now. Till, till 3 p.m. That's the whole church worldwide. And then the first three days of the month where we declare the month opening day, days of fasting and praying. Take this day seriously. Or when you take a fast yourself, and then the chain shall be broken. That was the action of fasting. Number six is the act of praise and worship. The climate of praise is the climate of deliverance. Psalm 32 verse 7. That will compass me about with songs of deliverance. The climate of praise is the climate of deliverance. And then the weapon of praise is the weapon of liberty. The weapon of praise is the weapon of liberty. The weapon of praise is the weapon of liberty. In 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 21, when Saul had an evil spirit tormenting him, it was a burden, it was a yoke. Verse 23, David played the instrument and Saul became free. Of course, you know Paul and Silas, Acts 16, 25 to 26, as they prayed and as they sang, suddenly there was an earthquake. Foundation of the prison was shaken. All doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Tonight, in this climate of praise and this climate of worship, everything that is a chain in your life, they are broken. <laughs> Finally, number seven is the prophet's mantle. First, the sent word. Second, the heart of service. Third, desperate praying. Fourth, the act of sacrifice. Five, the action of fasting. Six, the act of praise and worship. And seven, the prophet's mantle. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel, Hosea 12, 13, out of Israel, Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. The mantle of the prophet is for the liberty of the people. By a prophet. That is what we do all the time. When we say the fa your family altars are catching fire. When we say the witch that will not let you rest shall be laid to rest. By a prophet. The mantle of the prophet is for the profit of the people. Is for the profit of the people. The prophet is carrying a mantle so that the people can profit. That is, your prophet, your pastor, is targeted for the arrest of your losses. Somebody say amen. David was wasting away his life in the wilderness. Until God sent a prophet by the name Samuel. 
and pulled him out. He had a gift that nobody knew. First Samuel chapter 16 verse 13. He was pulled out. Peter labored all night and caught nothing. Until his prophet showed up. Master, I've toiled all night, I caught nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word. Luke chapter 5 verse 5. And everything changed. I stand here by this same prophetic and apostolic mantle to declare to somebody the God of my fathers change your story tonight. Egypt is letting you go tonight. In the name of Jesus. Every Pharaoh that will not allow you to rest. That Pharaoh and his generation shall be laid to rest. I stand here tonight to announce every help God helped us early if I was 50 years last year and I'm 51 years this year and then I've married for 25 years then you will know how old I was before I married two years two months 25 years and 10 months We're married. My wife was 23 years plus six months. Was already a doctor. Was already overseeing people. Has already finished house man, she finished youth service. At that age. Satisfy me early, Lord. Satisfy me early, Lord. I am saying that to say, anything you have seen as a result in the life of your prophet, that the devil is fighting in your own life, that fight is over forever. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. Every spirit of delay on your life's journey, every, every spirit of stagnation on your life's journey, today it is arrested. Say amen like a believer. You have the right to make demands on what the mantle of your prophet carries. What do I mean? Any testimony you have ever heard on this altar or on the altar of this church commission worldwide or testimony you have seen in the life of the pastor is yours. It's yours to demand on. It's your manifest. It's yours for manifestation. Somebody shout yes. Someone say a loud amen. Someone say a louder amen. Someone shout the loud most amen. I prophesy, I announce, I decree upon your life, upon your destiny. Tonight is the night where the yoke shall be broken. It's the night where the burden shall be lifted. Shout power. Take your seat. We're about to pray. And I, I want you to pray with intensity, aggressivity, explosivity. 
like you have never done before. Let me say two things before I close. What is the purpose of deliverance? Why will God break your chain and destroy your yoke? Why would God break your chain and destroy your yoke? Unto what purpose? Number one, for committed, undistracted service to God. Why does God want you free from witchcraft torment occultic harassment and sensual altar distraction delays of all kinds why does God want you free he answered it for us earlier on let my people go that they may serve me he said I am not planning to deliver you so you can live for yourself. For to me to live is Christ. Philippians chapter 1 verse 21. And to die again. Oh yes, uh, I want to be free from this witchcraft attack. So that I can just buy, get a lot of money. And just buy that kind of Mercedes Benz and just buy that kind of um, infinity jeep and buy and just buy myself a house in Dubai and just me and my husband or my wife will just be traveling around the world um, uh, if, the, if the journey meets us on Sunday we are just in the air uh, we will pick the tape when we come back home so, it's, not, it's not you I am talking to it is people who are saying how I wish I can dash myself to God but for this challenge only me can build a church of 10,000 sitter from foundation to roofing if only I can have the money I want to be free from these demonic nightmares of the night I want to use the night to pray not to bind demons of nightmare I want to use my time for evangelism, not for, not for hospital admission. I want to marry a man that me and him can chase the devil back to hell and make heaven together. I am not trying to marry so I can be like every other person. Because there are many every other person who are living miserable marriages. Am I communicating? There are many who are regretting being married. Oh Lord. I want to. I don't want anything to distract me. I don't want lack of money. I don't want lack of time. I don't want pain in the body. I don't want demonic. I just want to be free to face you. I don't want. Everybody asking me all the time, where's your husband? Where's your husband? Where's you? You've been going to church, church, church. What has you seen? Lord, set me free from distraction. Everyone who is like that, who want to face God, and the devil is trying to distract you with problem. Today is the end of the distraction. Can that amen be louder? you say a louder amen. amen lift the right and say in the name of Jesus tonight I decree I declare that I have no time for distraction father I want to face you
Take your seat. When I was going to know who to marry, that was what God told me verbatim. He said, you have come to a stage where I don't want you distracted, wondering is this the person or that person. Let me show you who it is so that you can face your front with focus. I can tell you it gave me focus. Brutal focus. No guesswork. Is it one or that one or that? No. Brutal focus. And I am passionate about people having focus to serve God. I see poverty as a distraction. I see sickness as a distraction. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? I see witchcraft attack. Not just a problem, but a distraction. Somebody, some, something that is trying to compete for your, for your attention with God. God wants your attention. And the poverty wants your attention. God wants your attention. And the problem wants your attention. Who will you face? So whenever I say distraction, understand what I'm talking about. Everyone that is a victim of everything distracting your focus, confronting your attention for God, dividing your attention for God, tonight I declare the distraction is over. Take your seat. So from this moment, when you begin to tell God to break your chains and set you free. I'm sorry, my alarm is telling me my time is up. When you want to ask God to break your chains, tell him what you will do. Lord, if I am free, this is what I will do. Somebody close to us had a serious challenge some time back. I've said it before. I don't want to mention the full detail anymore. And we went to the place, the hospital. And I made a vow to God. I said, I am going to give so and so just as a sacrifice in appreciation for this healing. Then number two. I am going to go to the village of that person and organize a mega crusade and chase the devils to hell and rescue many people from hell and, he, and, 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 and trust you for the healing of diverse people also in appreciation. And then God answered. The sacrifice was dropped. And the crusade was organized. Full blast. When we went to the crusade ground. Rain gathered. Heavy cloud. I said Lord. We came here for so and so purpose. If one drop of rain drop. Then the people who came to rescue wouldn't come. That is the only reason why. I want this rain to disappear. We don't need rain here now. Maybe Sahara Desert may need the rain. The rain dried up in the sky. The crusade was held in fulfillment. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? So you don't, you don't just, oh, I need deliverance, I need freedom. Free to do what? Free to serve God brutally. To make the devil regret every second or hour he tried to change your life. Is God speaking to somebody here? Lift up your right and say, Father, I am being set free and I shall serve you. And I shall serve you. And the devil cannot hold me back. Why? Are we being delivered for committed, undistracted service to God? And number two, for the deliverance of our loved ones.
Or you can put it in bl- blanket, just a blanket for the deliverance of our generation, the deliverance of others. In Luke chapter 22, verse 31 to 32, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you, that he may shake you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted or when you are delivered, strengthen thy brethren. I am not trying to set you free for yourself. Do you know the meaning, beloved? Your salvation should lead to somebody's salvation. Otherwise, it was a waste of salvation. Not totally wasted, but almost wasted. Because he said, I've called you to go and bear fruit. Your healing should lead to somebody's healing. You came, you came with crutches, you walked out with your tooth leg, and only you got healed. And you went to heaven, only you. Nobody followed you to church. No other cripple came to be healed. That was a waste of God's time almost. Your prosperity should prosper somebody. Somebody should be made because God made you. Your blessing should bless somebody. This is why God finds it difficult to help many people. Do you know? It's not hard for God to send me money. I am not on salary in the church. But God sends me money. Money that church cannot pay me. Why? Because a widow's money is inside that money. An orphan's money is inside that money. A child who cannot pay school fees, even though the father is alive, the money is inside. A village pastor, the money is inside. God knew that if I send it to that man, it will reach all those people. So he sends. I receive test message and requests every day. I mean, 200 level medicine. Father died. I can't continue. I am continuously. And I do my best as much as I can. That is why God wants you to be delivered. To strengthen your brethren. Am I communicating at all? Is God speaking to somebody here? If you are going to fulfill these two conditions. To serve God with your life. When he turns around your captivity. And to be instrumental in rescuing others. Then the days of that devil are already numbered. And today is the end of that challenge. Can you shout amen like a believer? A louder believer say amen. Somebody who believes that tonight is that final night. In which the chain shall be broken. And the yoke shall be destroyed in your life. You believe that? That the spiritual chain, the marital chain, the financial chain, the career chain shall be broken. You will stand up with a loud shout of amen. A louder shout of amen. Lift up your hands and give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Lift your hands and give him the praise. Lift your hands and give him the praise. 